Let the record show that I, Detective Ronald Atlas, am sat opposite the suspected Spaghetti Strangler's alibi, henceforth referred to as the Strangler's corroborator, or by his name, which is recorded as follows, Sir Bramble Berberum. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure, Ronald, my pleasure. Your letter was very cryptic, however, and I'm not sure the exact reason I've been summoned. Sir Berberum, you've been summoned here because we're trying to get to the bottom of this entire Strangler situation. You know the one? I can't say that I'm familiar, but I'm happy to help as best I can. Well, from what we can tell, all evidence thus far has pointed towards Davidos Stantonian. I see. There is one glaringly obvious problem with the eyewitness accounts, however. Is there now? The first witness we spoke to claimed the killer was clean-shaven. Well, you should be able to tell by looking that Stantonian is as upper-lip-whiskered as the next man. That's right. He named you as his alibi, if you will. Said that you could confirm that he didn't shave it off and grow it back again really quickly. Shave it off? Yes. Grow it back again? Yes. What makes you think something as magnificent as that could be grown back again in a matter of weeks or months? It's years of work that, decades even. Yes, but can you say for certain that you witnessed him with a moustache on the night of the first murder? Aye. But you don't even know what night it was. I don't need to. I've been living with him. You've been living with him? Aye. We're house partners. Partners? Partners? Partners. There's a funny sound and echo in here. In crime? You're saying there's two stranglers? Ronald, I'm beginning to think you're in over your head. Partners. As in love. Stantonian's gay. You're gay. Bent as a butcher's hook. Crooked as a crowbar. You're not straight is what I'm trying to tell you. So I can vouch for his moustache being there on account of it being entwined in mine. Bramble, that was about the last thing I expected to come out of your mouth. Got a problem with it? Um, not at all. As I said, it was unexpected. I suppose congratulations are in order. We're not married or pregnant, so I don't see much use for your congratulation. Right, yes, of course. Well then. Well, that about sums it up. I suppose we can leave it there. If you say his moustache was there, then I have no further questions. I certainly don't want to dig any deeper into your personal affairs. You want to know what it tasted like? Cut the tape for the love of... Thank you for the use of your recording device, Barnabas. Your client is free to go. Thank you for getting onto this promptly, Ronald. Unfortunately, it means we're back to square one. Best of luck, my friend. Sir Davidos, you're free to go. Sir Berberum has corroborated your alibi. Thank you so much, Barnabas. I can't thank you enough. Anything you need, any time at all, just let me know and I'll do everything in my power to assist. Wait till you see my invoice. What? Kidding, of course. This week's episode is brought to you by Brainless. Produced, edited, acted, recorded, filmed, and written by Loomis Lubdak. It's always a great time for a zombie apocalypse when you're a judgmental, brash, arrogant, loudmouth arsehole. Follow Jif the janitor and his offside at Clinton as they navigate their way through the joys of a town infested with the newly risen dead and the recently crazied citizens. All six episodes are available for patrons on Patreon or the low, low cost of a coffee on Ko-fi. The links are below. Thank you for listening. This has been The Strangler's Corroboration, a branch of The Strangler's Defense, a branch of The Writer's Wardrobe.